Jim George, also known as Professor Gadget, apparently also known as Santa Claus, has brought some toys for the tree that will be going to the children at the Florida Kids Helping Kids uh, makeshift store that will be uh, operating next weekend, where children will pick gifts for other children. That's a wonderful program, and all these children are really not doing the best right now as far as their lives are concerned, but they'll do better, and they'll, they'll get a big boost of of happiness when all these toys make their way. So Jim George brought in a bunch yeah, of toys. Good morning, Jim. Good. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Gosh, that was so nice to bring in all that stuff. Oh, no, it's my wife's stuff. She's she's a shopper. You could do the Santa Claus thing. You got the white beard. Yeah. You I was a- thinking maybe Doug could get out there. He's got the girth. <laughs> you know. Yes. <laughs> and ring his bell. Yes. And uh, put some hot chocolate out there. I think he's got a white beard right now, too. Oh. I think. How is he doing, by the way? After the doing pretty good urinary track, and he's everything. still got the bag. You know, Doug. Hope you don't mind. I'm telling, but he's doing well with it. Good. Anyway, you know, I, th- <clears throat> I think. I think what helped a lot was he went to rehab at one of the facilities. Yes, and he met other people in the same circumstances. So he said, "Oh, I'm not the only one that has this." And good. so good. that was part yeah. of the. Uh, I, I think rehabilitation sometimes is about more than physical. There's an emotional thing that happens when you're in a facility like that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Some people take it negatively. Everything is, you know, woe is me. But other people can learn from it and meet people and, you know, have a good time. The uh, the, the outpouring of love expressed through these toys that you just did is, is just that you can't, there's nothing to compare it to. Thank you so much oh, for doing it. Yeah, my wife does that. She, as soon as I told her about it, she said, uh, well, I'll just go shopping. You got a cold? You got something going <clears> on? <throat> it's a froggy. Just the morning voice? Yep, just morning voice. Just haven't spoken a whole lot I've, yet. I've tried the uh, coffee this morning. That did not take it out, so I guess <laughs> maybe, maybe the ice water, the WOCA special water. Do you know, this happens to me, too. Every morning, even though I do radio every day, I still have to talk in order to talk. <clears throat> uh, well, the way I do it is I record the news, and, uh, I, and I must do it 40 times before I get it right. Uh, so now then, then I'm ready. Well, it's a beautiful day out, although the... Uh, my windshield wiper says it's 47 degrees out this Your morning. Your windshield wiper tells you that? Well, you know, that little re- rear view mirror thing there. Are you coming to the parade tomorrow? I am. Good. Yeah, my wife and I love the parade. Are you coming to the funeral home where we'll be? Oh, yeah. I guess we did that last year, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hires Baxley, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a morbid thought, but yes. We'll <laughs> 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 come to the funeral home. Well, if beautiful. you think about it, though, I mean, if you think of what Christmas is about, it's about celebrating the the birth of the Savior yeah. who yeah. who s- makes death not permanent. That's or, it. However, I'm, I'm I'd be a horrible preacher, wouldn't I? I don't know about all that. <laughs> <coughs> Once you get going on the subject, you're okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. I appreciate that. Yes, yes. So uh, this is the time of year. Lots of gadgets. and uh... Lots of gadgets. But, you know, the things that are simple, like Robin and I were just discussing puzzles. You know, puzzles are timeless. If you even have a puzzle in your house that you put together, you know, 10 years ago, chances are you'd you'd enjoy taking it out, getting a card table, and putting it together again. It has the different colors. It, oh, yeah. It, it, yeah. it stretches your mind. I mean, uh, we do it because we read years ago that some of the Alzheimer's and other things that uh, affect as you get older are because your brain doesn't, you know, think a lot. Do you know you what know? I discovered about puzzles? Can I tell you a little story? You know, I was an activities director for an assisted living facility yes. for three years. Well, somebody somebody donated some puzzles to us, and I honestly didn't know what to do with them. And so I took one puzzle out, and I started working on it on a table just to see if anybody else wanted to start working on it. Right. Well, do you know what happened? Um, people would come in. The residents would come in. They'd sit there. They'd be just futzing with it, trying to find where does this piece go. And right. then somebody else would sit there, and they'd be talking about things. And next thing you know, it's a social gathering. It is. It's not about the puzzle. The puzzle is just a, a, an attractant, it's I guess. It's the vehicle to get them there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And it it was, it, I, I really appreciated puzzles more from that experience than than I ever thought was possible. Right. What we enjoy sometimes is people will give us puzzles without the picture. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. And then we have to put colors. We have to get little bowls and put yeah. the oranges and the oranges that touch the red and the red that touches the blue. And, and then we have to figure out what the picture yeah. looks like. Yeah. And uh, that takes us a long time. But we're in no hurry. We'll, we may work a half an hour this week on a puzzle. And maybe we just leave it out on a card table. And as we're passing by, so it's, it's low tech, but it's still gadgets. 
It is. It's I a, think you're right. <clears throat> and, and it's. Uh, by the way, I put a puzzle together last night, and it was a high tech puzzle. Oh, a high tech puzzle. <laughs> yes. Three D. No, oh. no. It, well, sort of, kind of. I guess it was. Um, Okay, do you know who Jackie Lawson is? No. Okay. Jackie Lawson is this artist, and she creates these very beautiful online e-cards for, for every season, really. Mm-hmm. But Christmas is her big forte. So every year she puts together an advent calendar. Okay. Okay, now each day of the, of the between December 21 and 25, you get to click on an ornament and do some. Have you done yours yet, Robin? My ornaments, yes. Yeah, you've done some? Yes. So one of the things you could do is put together puzzles. Okay. And they're on the screen, and you can choose between, I don't know how many pieces, like 10 oh, pieces. There's, there's 12 and 15 and 25, Something I Something like that. So you can yeah. choose how many pieces there are. Right. So you click and move them in place, something yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. Low tech, but still uh, a gadget by all definition of a gadget. Do you so, know what? Um, it, as a kid, I used to always love the pencils that you could push the back. And the pen and the lead would come out. Yeah, mechanical yeah, pencil. Yeah. yeah, I would find myself even in school doing that, doing <laughs> like three inches and putting it back in. And, yeah, uh, because yeah. I really didn't want to chew the pencil and chew the eraser. No, but friends of mine did, and their teeth were all I yellowy. Did, and I did that all the time. Paint in them, and I said, No, no, I'm no, not, I hated I'm seeing not people doing do that. that. So if we, yeah, that is an interesting topic. We were talking this morning about how was it Seneca Falls, Robin? Seneca yes, Falls. Yes, Seneca Falls, New it, York. Upstate New York is uh, said they're celebrating the It's a Wonderful Life movie. Yes, they've got, they they say the town is of Bed is it Bedford Falls? Yes, yes. Bedford is based on Seneca or whatever. And if you just go back to that era in your mind and you think about the technology that was around back then, the gadgets, you right. know, just I mean, just a normal radio, something we take for granted now. It yes. was really a big deal. I agree. I agree. You know, um, my wife and I, we have a toaster oven, but I like a toaster. At, 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 <laughs> at, at my office, I have a toaster oven. Do you really? And I have a toaster. But by the time you turn the toaster oven on, open the door, slide the two pieces of bread in, let's say, close the door, <laughs> you know, I just put two slices and push the handle down and walk away. You know, it's... Uh, and it and uh, actually a good piece of toast in the morning with a little jam and butter. You know, you mm-hmm. know would be a fun topic: gadgets that didn't take off. Oh, that oh, that didn't work for what, us. As one well. that came to one that comes to mind is the cassette recorder built into the refrigerator. Do you remember that? <laughs> I think I do, but it was hard. It was <laughs> nobody wanted it. What was it good for? I, I guess the idea was to leave a message for the kids if you're going out, rather than you know putting a note on the refrigerator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's that goofy. Yeah, that was that was weird. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. yeah, gadgets that didn't work out. Hmm. Or the radio in the shower, right? Did anybody use that? The radio. In, I think people do use that. Yeah. yeah. I know. I bought. You one remember of those. the microphone that you take in the shower with you? Also, no. Yeah, it was waterproof <laughs> microphone. Why would you do yeah. that? <laughs> I don't know. Who'd want it? <laughs> I mean, if you, singing in the shower is kind of a personal thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, it is. You need to broadcast it. Yeah. <laughs> do you sing in the shower? I, I, I do not. If you do, do you try to match the key of the water? Oh, I guess I do sing in the shower sometimes. My wife says, shut that up, whatever you're doing in there. I guess that oh, is, no. I guess that is singing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's a wonderful life is right. Um, you know, just think about where you would be if you would not be in Ocala. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, where, Gosh, where Jim, that's the whole world. Yes. This is the whole I world I, I could be. I think about it, how, the, how that this clicked in order for that to happen, and that happened in order for this to happen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I talked to a, a gentleman the other day, and I asked him, how did he get into Ocala? And he was saying, basically, he was in New Jersey, freezing. And he was a cable TV guy climbing telephone poles in the middle of winter. Oh, and really? He put, a, he put a request in for Florida. He didn't care where in Florida. Wow. He just wanted to go to Florida. Oh, wow. Ah. That's and, a cool, uh, cool story. And so they, they promoted somebody else over him. So he said, okay, I'll quit. And so they said, okay, well, we'll hire you back. But the only opening we have is in Florida. And he said, fine, I'll take it. And it was Ocala? And it, and it was Ocala. Wow. wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, so why did you? I mean, you left South Florida. I left because of the busyness and the traffic. It was unbearable. It was literally, literally unbearable. That and the mm-hmm. fact that Ed Egan, who was, who was one of the founders of ESPN, mm-hmm. there were three founders of ESPN. The other day, the chamber had an article about somebody who was claiming to be the founder of ESPN. Uh, but Ed Egan and an attorney out of Connecticut, and I believe this gentleman, um, started ESPN. And they called me and said, would you come and help us put up some satellite equipment and i said sure in ocala in ocala so we we had a so ocala c- is the birthplace of espn no we had a cnn uplink in ocala 
CNN had an uplink right here by the airport, and we ran it. I didn't know that. Yep, HBO. We turned. Did you ever hear about, hear about Captain Video? Yes. Do you know him? Yes. That was from Ocala. Well, who is it? I mean, do we know his name? Yeah, we do know his name. I don't know if I should say. <laughs> okay. Right okay. But he got in big trouble for doing that, right? He did get in big trouble for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah every transmitter has a code, and so all they did is videotape the uh, the actual uh, his message, and then look into the code, and they knew exactly where it came from. Wow. And they looked what time of day, and they said, okay, who was on duty that time of day? Uh-huh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I see. So Robin and I worked for a CNN affiliate yep. about that same time, mm-hmm. and we got the phone calls, but we had nothing to do with CNN other than being an affiliate. When you're yeah. an affiliate, you're really nothing. Yeah, she's, yeah. She's, yeah she's you're just not. You're carrying just the affiliate. signal. Yeah, you're on the yeah. books as having been an affiliate, yep. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't work for CNN. No. No. no you just but don't tell the boss that. Have you ever been to CNN <laughs> Center in, in Atlanta? Have you been to the CNN? No, I don't think oh, I have. Oh, it's It's a huge building. But you know where I was? I was at the CNN Center in the World Trade Center, the old World Trade Center. Oh. Yeah, they moved out of there before the, it was destroyed. But, yeah, do you remember that by chance? No, I never did go to the World Trade Center at all, ever. Yeah, they were downstairs, and it was um, they had a big window, and you could look in in there, and you would see you know familiar faces if you were a news junkie. But I've never mm-hmm. been to the one in, in Atlanta. Atlanta. You, it's, a, it's a day trip. You just need to drive up there. I should do it. Day. That sounds like something I'd it like really to do. It is interesting. All snows. right, let me take a phone call, and then we'll do the break. You got it. I see the phone ringing. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim George. Yes, good everybody, Mr. George. Yes, good morning. Uh, my uh, mother-in-law uh, recently moved here to uh, Orlando, Florida. Uh, it, it was in the family for zillions of years, and it's an old Philco radio, a large one with the old tubes, the big black tubes and all that. It was working up to about, I'm going to say maybe six, nine months ago, and all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore. Is there anybody in town here that you know or anybody anywhere that could restore a radio like that? Can you still get those old type tubes? Certainly. Uh, you can go online, of course, and send it away, especially up north around the Indiana area, and they have... Uh, uh, people that specialize in those old time radios, the old Philcos and the old Emersons and such. Uh, but I think I would probably b- try Bob's TV. Uh, they're on 441 as you head south out of town on the left hand side before you get to the villages. Uh, they actually come to your house a lot of times and they have a lot of tubes and such. But if they can't, um, there is you can go online and there's a place in Indiana you send it to and they'll refurbish the entire thing and fix it perfect for you with all original parts. Wow. That would be kind of, ex- that would be kind of expensive because that radio, I, I told myself because I helped move it at one time, it, it's heavy. Well, you don't need to send the wood. Uh, if you look inside, you'll see there's probably two or three screws that hold the chassis in. And all you do is oh. undo it and it slides out and then you unplug the, the speakers which are in the cabinet. And you just put that in a styrofoam type, you know, container, maybe bubble wrap, and you send it away, yeah. and and it comes back looking brand new. I could take it probably one of these professional uh, packagers uh, in town here and have them send it up, you know. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think it's probably better, probably better to send it up there because uh, they seem to uh, specialize in that kind of deal. Yes, it's on the line. It's in Indiana. I want to say. Uh, Something back Jones, way back Jones, Indiana, or something like that. It's a, or jo- mm-hmm. oh, Jones is back, Indiana. Oh, Jones is okay, back. Okay, down, very good. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. All right, you that's good information. Yeah, that's cool. All right, we will take a little break. Be right back with Jim. By myfwc.com. Safe boating is no accidents. Rather cloudy on this Friday and breezy with rain at times, mainly through the morning hours. A high between 61 and 65. Gradual clearing and chilly Friday night. Lows ranging from the upper 30s in the coldest interior northern parts of the zone to 57 along the coast. And for Saturday, more sun than clouds. Breezy and comfortable. High 67 to 71. Sunshine and some clouds. Sunday, high 76 to 80. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. When you go into AutoMax, Marion County's number one pre-owned dealer for over 15 years, you won't take the new car depreciation because AutoMax saves you thousands on late model vehicles. Browse the inventory online at AutoMaxOcala.com. Then come down to see the great vehicles and upfront pricing in person. Compare up to 60 models inside the Climate Control Showroom. So take your time. No high pressure, no gimmicks, no games. On the corner of 17th and Easy Street. AutoMax. Quality cars, outlet prices. 
veterans are the foundation upon which our freedom is built. Listen to The Source WOCA each Thursday at 9 a.m. to Veterans News with Hank Whittier from Vets Helping Vets. You'll hear tributes, information on veterans' issues, and stories that will make you laugh, cry, and feel proud. Veterans News always focuses on the military, past and present, and on our first responders. Veterans News is brought to you each week by Bob Wines Camellia Gardens and Nursery, keeping you blooming since 1952. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. We are more motivated to walk when we're at an interesting destination. Boy, I agree with this, whether it's a park, down Main Street, or even at the mall. The people we sit next to at work, we now know they can have a huge impact on our performance. Our mucous membranes dry out on planes. We lose some of the food's aroma. But breathing more deeply as we eat on the plane will make a bland meal taste a whole lot better. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Hey, Robin, did you know the Pac-Man store has moved? After 22 years of business in Churchill Square, they moved? Yes. The new store is one mile west of their old location on 17th Street, right across from Penn Flooring. Do they still have the same smiling faces and great customer service? (laughs) They pack it, ship it, crate it, and freight it using FedEx, USPS, DHL, or UPS. You can ship all those Christmas gifts. You shop, we ship. Pac-Mail, 1202 Southwest 17th Street, Suite 201. Call 352-368-9779. Hi, this is Larry Whitler. And this is Robin McBlain. From AMO Keller Live. And Robin, I love Christmas. Oh, me too. I love it because we give things. Oh, yeah. We get things. <laughs> and see all the smiling faces. It snows. Oh, yeah. And and, and we get we to We have do, hot chocolate. And we get to do these Christmas greetings on the radio. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. And thank you for listening and for helping out with all of our things that we do. God bless. All year long. <laughs> All right, 22 minutes after 9 o'clock, and uh, the weatherman says expect some rain this morning, and then things oh, will, great. Cool, will cool down. Rain and cold. That's what we need. <laughs> great combination. The rain, the rain ushers in the code. Cold. So I looked real quickly for the gadgets that failed. I got 10 yeah. of them. Ready? Okay, okay. The Apple Pippin failed. It came out in 1995. It was a video game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, Microsoft Kin um, let's see. When did that come out? It, it, it was only on the market for 48 days. Is it Ken like Ken the Barbie doll Ken? No, that? Ken like... Uh, like oh, K-I-N? Like Ken Folk, yeah. Okay. Oh. Microsoft bought the company... Uh, what is this supposed to be? Oh, it's, a, the, I guess, an early smartphone, but it wasn't so smart. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one is a, a, a DIVX system. Um, what is that? It came out in 1998. just didn't take off. I guess it was challenging uh, the other systems, huh? Oh, Nintendo and Atari, probably. It was yeah. it, it was uh, featured as um, from Circuit City. Circuit City didn't even right, last right. the whole store. <laughs> that's right. Uh, another one, the Twitter peak. The whole point of having a smartphone is to combine a bunch of stuff in one place. Why carry a utility belt full of gadgets when one of them will do? This philosophy obviously didn't make its way to headquarters of Peak, who released the Twitter peak. It was a device, and all you could do was Twitter on the one device. Oh, boy. Oh. Well, that's why that one didn't work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another one called the Nokia Engage. Uh, tried to challenge Nintendo. It's another handheld video game. Just to work out. Um, here's one called the Moto. In the early 2000s, everybody thought they had the next best thing in technology. One of the most egre- egregious, is that how you say that word? Was Scout Electron Electromedia's Moto, which was basically a pager for hipsters. A pager, Jim. Oh, wow. Good. That's what we need, a pager. Didn't work. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Uh, the Three Come Audrey didn't... This, this the Three Come Audrey? Three Come Audrey, yes. Three, three Come uh, Audrey. Don't <laughs> <laughs> say that fast. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> uh, let's see. This was dumb, but many yeah. companies tried to cash in on it. One of the most failed products, the Three Come Audrey, a kitchen countertop box designed to enable what the company called Internet Snacking. The idea was that housewives would use it to look up recipes. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh gee. <laughs> oh, my god! Don't gosh. think so. Now, here's another one. Uh, the Poma wearable PC. Wearable a, PC. A, a wearable computer. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is awful stupid looking. Okay. <laughs> I have to look it up. All right. The next one is the QCAT scanner. Um, digital scanner. convenience to release for QCAT scanner. A handheld barcode scanner. So you go to the store and find out how much something costs. Yeah, now they have an app for that. Whatever. Yeah, you got your phone and... Okay.
and then uh, it'll even tell you where you could get the product cheaper. Yeah. And the last on one is app. Virtual Boy. <laughs> oh, that's it. And that didn't sell? <laughs> it didn't sell. <laughs> wow. No virtual woman. Uh, this has caused huge eye strain. Had 3D images. was too cumbersome to carry around. <laughs> yeah. Huge eye strain. <laughs> it only lasted on the market for one year. Yeah, I can, I can see that. I can, I can picture the huge eye strain. <laughs> That's right. Too cumbersome to carry around. Right. Good morning. Put that over your shoulder. Got a caller. Good morning. A listener calling you. Good morning. You're on the air. Uh, good morning, Larry Robin. Hey, it's Sunny. Georgia. I can remember when I was working, first started, well, been working there about maybe 10 years. All the uh, bosses and uh, people like the upper management, they all carry the pages, and you would all of a sudden see them reach for the... Yes. Uh-oh. He disappeared. He uh, your, in, your internet's breaking up. There was something going on there, yeah. yeah it's, it's your side. Because two people have called in so far, break it that up. It sounds like that, yeah. They're just reboot. That's all. Where do I reboot? Reboot your internet. Where is it? It's in the back room. I'll reboot it before I leave. Okay, thank you. That'll fix it. Yes, yes, yes. Well, does that does that affect these these phone calls too? From it should, yes, it should. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, all your phones are on. Good it. thing you're here. Yeah, all your well phones. Well done. Right. We have another call coming in. Maybe it's Sunny back. Maybe Sunny back coming. Good morning. You're on the air. Uh, good morning. This is just talking about the. Uh, uh, in the evolution of uh, pagers and stuff. At one time, it was a very uh, big deal for people to carry these pages around. Yes. Them. And uh, they were, the only thing it ever showed was the phone number to call back. And right. you would uh, either to acknowledge it or you would just click to shut it off. Right. That was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's amazing how, how far we've came since then, isn't it? It is. Well, anyway... Merry Christmas, to everybody. Merry Thank you, Sonny. I apologize for the phone, uh -huh. the phone line. There. Are they still using dictaphones? You remember those old dictaphones What's where you, dictaphone? the doctor would record in them and then the, oh, yes. the secretary <laughs> would have to take them home or right. something that right, call right, in right. and listen to it and then right. transcribe, you know? Yeah, I think they use the, the, some th thumb drives now. Yeah. And then you just plug it in and then the secretary. Yeah. I know my doctor uses his cell phone. He yeah. just talks right into his cell phone and it translates it for, it writes it on the screen because I'll watch, he'll pull the screen up and he'll save it on the cell phone and it's sending it right to the computer screen. Oh, wow. Printing it. How cool. You oh. don't even have to translate oh, it then. It's all you done. All, all done. done. Have you ever heard the left field questions we do on Fun with Joe? I've heard one or two of them, yeah. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool technology. Yeah, like yeah, um, very. what is a what is a person in China call their best uh, dinnerware? <laughs> oh, that's funny. I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> there is no answer. I was just saying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you can't call it China. No. Paper place. Maybe they call it paper place. <laughs> I went to a birthday party uh, Tuesday night, I think it was, or Wednesday, I can't remember, and the guy had his own left field questions, and that was one of them. <laughs> really? What people in China call their best dinnerware. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been fun. It was fun. It was fun. He was celebrating his third year of life. He basically had cancer, and they gave him no time to live. Oh. And they said the only thing that would help him would be an experimental thing, which was stem cell. And they basically uh, hmm. took, work. took out his red blood cells and his white blood cells, grew them outside of his body. And then after about three or four days when he had millions and millions of them growing, they then, like, killed him. They took, just stopped his heart, stopped him, and then <gasps> put him back in and then brought him back to life again. So he's three oh. years old as wow. of the 7th of December. That's oh, technology right wow. there. So we'll see you wow. tomorrow at the yeah. parade? Yes, yes. All right. Hey. Better well, bring a jacket, though. Bring yeah. a jacket for sure. Whoa. Jim, always fun. I love this show. Thank you for coming in and doing uh, this. Thank you and your wife for the toys. No Thank problem. you that so is much. awesome. That is Thank fabulous. you. All right, we'll be right back. Have a great day. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. The president elect Donald Trump hitting the campaign trail for Republican John Kennedy in the Louisiana Senate race. Last night in Iowa, the president elect dismissed the criticism that he's appointing some of the wealthiest Americans into cabinet positions. And one newspaper criticized me why can't they have people of modest means? 
because I want people to make a fortune. Mr. Trump's latest appointment is Andy Puzder to become the next labor secretary. Puzder is the CEO of the fast food restaurant chain CKE Restaurants. Like Berman with the Fox Business Network Fox confirms that Mr. Trump will meet with House Speaker Paul Ryan this morning at Trump Tower. An explosion in Cairo on a road popular with tourists leaves six police officers dead. And in Alabama, a man convicted of killing a convenience store clerk in 94 has been put to death. Fox News, we report, you decide. Okay, so everyone makes a holiday wish list this time of year. And usually these lists are filled with all kinds of the latest gadgets, games, and the hottest new gotta have it gifts. But is it possible to give a gift they'll love that might not be on their list? The answer is yes, and I'm here to tell you what it is. I'm David McNeil, inventor of WeatherTech floor liners. You see, at WeatherTech, we start by using lasers to measure a vehicle's interior, so each floor liner is custom fit to each specific make and model. So whatever you drive, your car's floor will be fully protected up the front, in the back, and even up the sides. And the best part is they are made right here in America. WeatherTech also has a full line of premium automotive accessories that make ideal gifts for everyone this season. Ordering is easy. Shop online at weathertech.com or call one 800